The Book of True Life, Teachings of the Divine Master, Volume 10, Teaching 277. I perceive this multitude as forerunners of a caravan who has followed me throughout the eras. You are the wise nation of spiritual Israel, with the fighting spirit of Judah, preparing and leading the way for others to follow. As I prepare you to engage in the final battle, I will be guiding your steps and helping you fulfill your mission. During this period, I have sent you to earth as humanity confronts its greatest ordeals. Man will continue to pursue his material ambitions for a while longer until he becomes weary from experiencing so much pain and suffering. His conscience will make him aware that his life is non-productive and fruitless and guide him to me through the path of spirituality. When the spirit awakens and carefully analyzes the path it has taken in the past, it will seek the true path. That path will guide it back to the basic principles established by God. The first and last law that God gave to man was to love one another and to practice deeds of virtue. Love is a fountain of perfection. I want you to await the fulfillment of my word and to always be in spiritual contact with me and with the spiritual world. Thus, you will never feel that you are distant from me. I will unite all spirits from the different worlds throughout the universe so that in unity they will acquire strength to fulfill their mission. To fulfill your mission, you do not need to neglect your earthly responsibilities or separate yourself from the world. I ask you to attend only to those physical needs that are essential so that your spiritual will remain free and become fully aware of its great destiny within my work. I will give you those things that are necessary for your human life on earth. I will not ask you to neglect your material responsibilities. On the contrary, my word will teach you how to fulfill all of your responsibilities because every responsibility forms a part of your mission. You are living during a period of struggle, activity, and great achievement, and it is necessary for your spirit to engage in all three. You need to develop your spiritual gifts so that you can become transformed as my disciples were in the second era. They imitated the divine master and lived in unity. You will be unable to take my teaching to humanity unless you truly are spiritually prepared. Because humanity is more spiritually involved than in the past. Offer peace to your brethren and teach them spirituality. If they observe that you live in harmony and practice brotherhood with your brethren, they will listen to your words and inspiration and spiritual wisdom. If you are going to preach, teach peace, you need to lead a peaceful life. If you are going to speak love, you need to truly feel love for your brethren before you can truly teach it. Do not reject the deferring beliefs of your brethren as you carefully analyze their beliefs. Accept only those things for their doctrines that you know are true and reveal in my teachings of love. Although you will meet some individuals who worship God in a fanatical and material manner, you will patiently help them acquire a new knowledge of God. You will reveal to them that their spirits can acquire great spiritual knowledge if they carefully analyze my teachings. You will speak to them of my universal spirit, of the immortal of the spirit, and how the spirit becomes more spiritually evolved. You will teach them how to pray, how to communicate with God from spirit to spirit, and will guide them to spiritual knowledge. I entrust you with that work, a work of love and patience. Take care of your spirit, which is my child. 
Accept my new revelations because they offer you much knowledge and will help you to comprehend all those things that you are unable to comprehend from my previous teachings. Today, I am reminding you of the teachings that I gave you in the past. I am combining all of the teachings that I have given you throughout the eras, thus offering you another testimony of my Father. Use the spiritual strength that I have given you to triumph over all ordeals and temptations. Be patient when you are suffering so that you will be able to fulfill my path and attain salvation. During this third era, I want your worship to be as pure and perfect as the fragrance of flowers. Once man develops faith and succeeds in constructing a temple within his spirit and learns to respect God, the wars on earth will cease. Thus, this valley of tears and suffering will become a land of peace and the kingdom of heaven will descend upon mankind. Allow me to speak to you thus. Although you believe it is impossible, I know everything that will occur on earth in the future. Whereas humans on earth do not know. If you are not aware of what is presently occurring on earth, how would you be able to foretell the future or understand my prophecies? My messengers are now arriving on earth to help mankind become spiritually enlightened. They have come to earth to defend the truth with deeds of true love. Does anyone know who they are? Is anyone aware that there are children on earth today who will become my future apostles and prophets? It is necessary that this nation of people which has received my present revelations arrive to offer testimony of me and help mankind to awaken spiritually. Thus, man will be able to receive the spiritual manifestations and signs that will occur during this period. You must take care of this seed of spiritual knowledge that you possess. I want you and your children to take these teachings to the other nations on earth. Use whatever means are convenient to spread my message throughout the world, as long as your conscience informs you that you are following the true path. Those of you who are presently listening to me are not the only ones with this manifestation. You will fulfill a part of that mission, while others who will come after you will continue that same mission. You need to continue to practice this doctrine of love from generation to generation so that man can comprehend its pureness and spirituality and maintain its truth. You still do not know the true meaning and essence of my doctrine. Thus, you continue to disrespect it with your materialistic practices that lack true spirituality. When your mind and spirit awaken to recognize the truth, you will no longer taint my doctrine with anything that is impure. It is your mission to take this doctrine to your brethren throughout the world. Your spirit was assigned that mission before it came to earth. Although your material mind is unaware of this, your spirit is aware of its mission to join a multitude of people as witnesses to the Lord's new manifestation to the world. Blessed are those who have retained and remembered the mandate and promise of the divine master in their spirit because they are becoming spiritually enlightened. They are fulfilling the mission that was assigned to them. When they have fulfilled it joyfully, they will see others come after them to continue the work. Those who arrive later will observe the satisfaction that the path is pure and spiritually prepared and that the sowing of the fields has begun. Those of you who were my first workers during this period had to struggle greatly because none of your brethren had prepared your path. Nevertheless, you have managed to take my message to humanity. Thus, be aware that those workers who will arrive after you will be expected to offer my message to the world with greater enlightenment and clarity because their path was prepared. 
Since the first era when the prophets announced the arrival of the Messiah, they said that all nations would receive his blessing. Now I say to you that during this era, all nations will once again receive my blessings because I will communicate with everyone from spirit to spirit. Blessed is the one who seeks to purify himself through prayer, repentance, and good deeds because he is truly cleansing his stains. He will have purified his spirit when he presents himself before me. Blessed is the one who is able to comprehend this truth because he will find the true path to follow and will become spiritually enlightened. In the second era, I came to teach mankind to cease the shedding of blood and to discontinue the practice of sacrificing innocent victims on the altar of Jehovah. Instead, I taught man to sacrifice his own selfish desires as an offering to God. Today, I have come to inform you to stop practicing so many meaningless rituals. You have chosen to practice those rituals instead of truly practicing my doctrine of love. When you listen to my teachings, it surprises you that you are able to comprehend and practice what previously you thought was impossible. It is because your spirit is now slowly traveling an unfamiliar path. As you become spiritually enlightened by my teaching, you will begin to discontinue materialistic forms of worship and rituals which you truly believe you needed to practice. The material symbols that you use to worship God are also beginning to disappear now that you are comprehending true spiritual worship. Today, your worship is simple, pure, practical, and spiritual. I have not yet revealed many things which you need to know. Therefore, I tell you not to be satisfied with what you have attained and received. As your spirit continues to progress along its spiritual path, I will give it new revelations. I have come to teach you a new way to practice my law and to tell you to analyze the spiritual and divine teachings that I am revealing to you. I do not want you to analyze me as the scientists and theologians have done. Rather, you will elevate yourself through prayer in a humble, respectful, and loving manner as I reveal to you those things that you need to know. Whoever prays in this manner to the Lord will be like a young disciple who is thirsty of spiritual enlightenment and knowledge. I will allow him to feel my presence and caress as I reveal those things that he needs to know. I will spiritually enlighten him, eliminate his doubts, and provide answers to many mysteries. Thus, after praying, his spirit will be able to reveal to the physical body those things that it learned from the divine master. Those who arrive before my presence without humility and respect to learn about spiritual and divine things will become confused and will fail to learn anything. The doors to the spiritual divine wisdom are only open to those who are humble and are closed to those who are not. Since man still has many things to learn about life, he has not yet become my disciple on earth. I want your heart and spirit to be humble so that when you seek enlightenment along the spiritual path, you will find answers to all your questions. Those who prepare themselves will not weep nor sigh once my manifestation comes to an end. Caravans of foreigners will arrive to ask you about what you saw and heard during my manifestation. You will offer a true testimony of what I taught you and will explain all things that they consider mysteries or mysterious. They will be amazed at how clearly you are able to explain all mysteries and will perceive you as spiritually enlightened. They will tell you that you are fortunate to have heard the Divine Master speak, although it was not through human spokesmen. Once again, I have come to give man my teaching and to remind him that he is not alone. 
I want him to listen to the voice of his conscience and to become aware that great divine wonders await his spirit when he departs from this life. I have spoken with mankind about these wonders. Those who know how to pray and are able to perceive spiritual visions will verify those wonders. Scientists who study the mysteries of nature will also offer testimonies of the wonders they have found. The more spiritual and scientific knowledge that man seeks, the more he will discover. However, when will man become inspired to study the essence of spiritual love? As long as he neglects to do so, he will not be fulfilling his mission in life. The elements of nature will continue to unleash themselves to awaken man from his lack of compassion. For man is motivated by hatred, ambition, materialism, and the pride of his scientific pursuits. During this period, scientists demonstrate a true lack of compassion as evidenced by their deeds. For they are destroying nations, cities, and killing their brethren by the millions. They are converting men into slaves and bringing great turmoil to life on earth. They are unaware of the gravity of their deeds. That is why I say that they lack compassion and true understanding. Only my mercy can help humanity. And that is why I have come to touch the heart of man and to awaken his spirit. Thus, he will be able to listen to the voice of his conscience, which will make him aware of all the wrong he has done, and at the same time inspiring him to correct his mistakes. Man needs to understand that all beings will ascend to me, not in material bodies as they would like, but spiritually. Thus, man will strive to perform deeds that will not only benefit mankind, but also himself. Many beings on earth have become very evil, vain, and arrogant. Although they have given themselves material crowns, their spirits are in a state of mystery and spiritual darkness. There is a great difference between my truth and what man believes is the truth. My people, you cry as you listen to my word. When will humanity cry in that same manner as it listens to my revelation? I forgive everyone. This is a moment of grace. I shed my infinite light upon all the worlds and upon all my children. This is the era of light. Thus, the divine enlightenment from the Holy Spirit will fully illuminate the innermost parts of the human heart and spirit. Man will soon know why he is born on earth, as well as the purpose, mission, and meaning of life on earth. Also, he will comprehend the true meaning of death. Humanity will soon leave behind its theories and external forms of worship and will begin living in the true manner that God wants it to live. Man will dedicate himself to living a righteous life on earth and will worship me through his deeds of love and virtue. When the time arrives for him to depart from this earth, he will know that his spirit will enter into a superior life. Thus, when the eyes of the spiritual body are closed for the last time, man will no longer refer to it as death. Man will begin to understand the truth when he realizes that the separation of a spirit from his material body is no more than a transition step. That separation is necessary so that the spirit can continue to progress and dwell in his other mansions that are more involved. The creator placed man on earth, a place from nature it constantly evolving toward perfection. Although man is surrounded by nature, it does not evolve in harmony with it. He does not seek to better understand himself morally, nor does he seek to perfect his spirit, which is the essence and reason for his existence. Humanity has evolved and progressed scientifically, but has never been interested in evolving spiritually. Although his spirit is the most noble and elevated thing that exists within him, 
Man's personal or earthly ambitions, desires, and worries are his only concerns. Man has sought material knowledge from earth alone with material rewards, honors, power, and self-gratification. He has sought to establish his heaven on earth. That is why I tell you that while nature is continually evolving to achieve perfection, man has failed to evolve and progress. That is why he suffers, stumbles, and experiences great ordeals along his path. Man does not realize that as he becomes more spiritually evolved and begins to live in harmony with all things, he can become master of all earthly things. A mandate that God gave to man at the beginning of time. Instead, man has preferred to rule on earth guided by his low passions, greed, arrogance, and hatred. Consequently, he has converted himself into a servant and a slave of earthly ambitions, becoming a victim of the elements that surround him. Make an effort to truly know yourself. Search within the depth of your being to discover your essence and I assure you that you will feel illuminated upon discovering that you are foremost a spiritual being, a child of God. My present teachings offer you spiritual knowledge, enabling you to become familiar with some of the knowledge that the Father has reserved for his children. Each human being possessed of a spirit is endowed with divine greatness and many spiritual gifts. These teachings and this doctrine of God has been given to man to make him worthy of attaining that grace. Humanity has greatly regressed spiritually because of its materialism. It has endured great sufferings because it is not interested in seeking purity, truth, and spiritual elevation. The spirit is attracted toward things that are virtuous and pure, whereas the physical body is attracted towards things that are unvirtuous and immoral. They struggle with one another and do not live in harmony. That is why I have come to give you my doctrine of love. It teaches the spirit and the physical body to live in harmony as they follow the same end deal of divine love. This doctrine will give to the spirit those things that pertain to the spirit and to the world those things that pertain to the world. The flesh has instincts and low passions. It is attracted to the material things of earth because that is where it was born. This is why man needs a doctrine that will make the human heart more sensitive, noble, and virtuous without preventing him from fulfilling the laws that govern him on earth. With a doctrine of love, the spirit will also be able to elevate himself toward the eternal and divine, toward the spiritual kingdom where it was born. If the spirit is able to triumph over the flesh and material world, it will be easier for the spirit to elevate itself towards the divine father when it separates from the material body. The material world where it once dwelt and became a slave will remain far behind. Man possesses a spirit which is why he is similar to the Divine Father. As a spirit evolves, it gets closer to the Divine Father who creates all spiritual beings. And evolved spiritual beings possess great wisdom, love, strength, and enlightenment. That being will rejoice living in a state of spiritual perfection, a state of true and perfect joy where neither suffering nor misery exists. If that was not the final destination of your spirit, truly I tell you that I would not have given you so many divine teachings. The commandments that I gave you in the first era should have been sufficient for mankind to live in peace on earth. I came in the second era to live among men and promised them that a world that was infinitely superior to earth awaited them. I also promised 
that I would return in the future to bring new teachings and to explain those things that man was not able to comprehend. Thus, you need to know that the spiritual destiny of mankind is much more elevated than you realize. The joy that awaits your spirit is much greater than you could ever imagine. My peace be with you. This reading was from the Book of True Life, Teachings of the Divine Master, Volume 10, Teaching 277. You can find links to downloads for this PDF at coachingthefight.shop.